All right, so I needed a video to wait until Event Arena. And at the same time, I did want to talk about this because I was talking with some people about Spirit Dive Uno. And I'm like, yo, this would be a very good video, I think, considering that Spirit Dive Uno is coming out now or should come out on the 27th. So in about nine to 10 days, depending on when you're seeing this, we will be getting Spirit Dive you know now why exactly we're getting spirit dive let's talk about a couple of things so first of all we are currently in the royal knights arc on jp so that's reason number one reason number two is because they do fest every second season and the season before we got zora and vanessa which would now make it that you know should be next right as the festival as we got mario in season nine now we're going to season 11 so we should technically be getting you know for the festival now um there were there was valkyrie noel leaked now the thing is with valkyrie noel is that we just got a new noel there's no way in hell they're releasing two noels within two weeks of each other so valkyrie does seem to be the first anniversary jp unit but the way it lines up you know should be the half anti unit on global so that's gonna be pretty cool i'm personally very happy with you know being a half anti unit i think that works out perfectly fine but unfortunately for noel she's just gonna be a random drop but i guess black asta was so it doesn't really kind of mean anything now then, what will his color be? As of right now, there's no way of knowing because none of his kit is really part of any type of like mono. Like there's nothing like saying if your whole team is red, you get this buff. Or if your whole team is red, the enemy gets this debuff. So this is the way that we're finding out. The first fest was Julius. Then the second fest was Black Asta. Then the third fest was Mario Leona. Going in this order, the colors should stay the same. And Julius was the first fest. And now we're resetting. So you know should be blue. Now, this also makes sense because right now, what color is very underpowered? Blue. All these mono units, well, mainly Zora and William, um, they came out and they didn't really do much. But with the perspective of Yuno, know, I think we have something cooking up. Now, green is still very strong. Red is still very strong. And with Rill, it was pretty good. So to me, it makes sense that um you know is blue now people will have some things to say but we're gonna talk about it okay this video is the perfect introspective because of the fact that when i first made this dive video it was before zora even came out so now we got a better look at that and i think i'm more open-minded to this defender william so let's talk about it let's go over his kit now looking at what he's doing my guess is that he is an attacker it could be a debuffer, but I just don't see it. To me, it really does scream attacker. Now, the one thing with Fest is that it's very hard to really, like, slap anything else. But I don't know what they would do after this. But it's just... I feel like it's going to be a lot of the same units getting Fest, which kind of sucks. I would personally love a Dorothy Festival, but I know other people might not. But, you know, a debuffer Fest Dorothy would go pretty crazy, but I don't think... Like, fair enough, it would not make that much money. So, skill one. Inflicts reduced mobility debuff on an enemy, and then if Spirit Dive is present, get a X% percent increased speed buff. Now, this is a very good skill 1. Just being able to do this much on a skill 1 is super strong. Um, so basically, yeah, we get Spirit Dive through the ultimate. Now, um, we'll just continue reading. Skill 2. Inflicts X% percent reduced mobility debuff on an enemy, and then if Spirit Dive is present on self, inflicts silence on a designated enemy. Now... Due to the reading of how it says on a designated enemy, usually it says on a designated enemy when the attack itself is AoE. So that means everyone's just getting a mobility debuff, which would be pretty crazy. Now, the one thing is that debuff immunity is starting to become much more popular. Um, just for example, Zora himself gives debuff immunity. And in general, many more people are running the resilience talent. So you won't see debuffs being as crazy. I feel like we're more towards like needing buffs, but this will still be pretty good on units that don't have the debuff up debuff immunity up now this is also just super strong being able to silence guaranteed you're choosing oh my god yeah no that's really good now the alt is a total silence then grants the spirit dive which i'm gonna say two turns i think it's pretty fair of me to say that spirit dive should be for two turns right i think so i do think so and then a speed increase so speed increase here speed increase here and reduce mobility right silence it's just really good um spirit dive doesn't do anything besides like unlocking parts of his kit being this and this right now well, there's other parts too but we'll talk about that now it's passive he gets every turn at the start of every turn he gets blessing of the wind spirit now what exactly does this do it increases the amount of damage he does which is why i'm guessing he's an attacker and not a debuffer because it could go both ways considering there's total silence reduced mobility reduced mobility but there's also increased speed and then oh well you know there's a lot of stuff indicating both but this increased damage does tell me he's an attacker um 
For this to be good, I would like it to be 20% damage each turn. Or 10. 10, 10 to 20. Hopefully on the upper side of the, that, but like 10 to 20 would be good every turn. Because he does have speed increase, speed increase here, right? So, you know, to me, like, you won't, like, you're going to get a good amount of turns, but it's not really going to be too helpful if you only have like a 30% damage increase. Um, At least like to keep up with all the extra damage reduction, right? Especially because if blue has not that much damage reduction, at least give them a bunch of ways to do damage is my personal opinion. Now, do passives. Dupe 2. When you get Spirit Dive, you get Invulnerability. I mean, you get that ult and you're cooking, right? You are cooking. Now, of course, there's the option where... Well, there's the belief that, well, the Red Uno could just silence, but we'll talk about that very soon. Um, now, besides that, he also, at max dupe, gets a certain amount of SP at the start of every turn. Now, if it's 1 SP, this is still cracked because it immediately lets you get your ult back in 4 turns instead of, like, 6 or, like, 3 even. You're going to get your ult back very quick with this, which is really crazy. Um, now, his combo removes immortality, which is just nice to have. And then his skill 2 adds barrier immunity on an enemy. Hopefully, it's AoE. If it is, this will be crazy. Um, I could see it being AoE because this does seem like an AoE skill to me. Um, do we have his uh, icons? This has to be AoE. This is the skill 2. That looks AoE to me. There's no fucking way, right? No way. So yeah, barrier immunity would be very strong. Especially because you're already doing all of this stuff. Man. And then this makes it where, yeah, they're just making it so every single skill page wants to be maxed out. Um, if Spirit Dive is present on self upon attacking, there is an X percent chance to grant an SP buff. Which means if it's at max dupe, it will be a 100% chance to get the SP buff. Which then means this, where you get SP at the start of every turn, plus this will probably let you get your ult back in two turns. And that means you're going to always have 100% uptime for this ult with the Spirit Dive. And what else does that mean? There's going to be a bunch of total silences going around and also a bunch of speed increases. So yes, let's look at it in the terms of what the team is looking like. That's the important part. Now, what I was talking about, about um, Yuno not being able to get silence is because of this William, okay? If we do look at it, what he does do is that if everyone is blue... At the battle, or when the battle starts, he grants protection to the ally with the highest all attack. And obviously, you know, it's going to be the DPS. So due to that fact, William will be a very good addition. Okay, this protection will mean you cannot target, you know, for two turns, which is very strong because, you know, first of all, um, already has a vulnerability when he uses his alt at two loops. Wait, yeah. So if he's able to use his alt, then immediately... Spirit Dive is just going to be invulnerable to, and not going to take damage even from little AoE attacks and he cannot get hit. And that's going to be very good for this type of team. So for sure, um, I would say Spirit Dive with this William is going to be very good. And uh, I mean, I guess this guy was released two seasons prior or no, six weeks prior to build up to, uh, you know, which, you know, kind of makes sense. But we'll have to see in practice. I think it can be good. What I am happy about is that you don't really need this, right? Um, you don't really need this. I mean, this is pretty good. When you take damage, if the uh, DP, if your DPS has a, a counter active, give an increased damage dealt. But the thing is, for blue, what? We'll have Spirit Dive, William, we'll say. Um, the, the Clover Academy, Noel, I guess. And then Zora, I guess, would be the play. Because Zora is still going to be pretty strong. If you use his skill 2, he puts the magic attack reduction. And with the... the with the skill page, he also puts 20% damage reduction with the reflective trap. So we'll see for that. But um, I would say that it should be a pretty strong blue team, right? I don't like, I'm still kind of iffy on how good it's going to be compared to like mono red or mono green. But you guys let me know what you think down below. You know himself on paper looks like a very strong DPS. And over time, what I like is that he gets stronger. Which makes it very fun, right? Very, very fun that at the start of every turn, he gets increased damage. But he's going to be quick. He's going to be very quick. And I'm very excited for this, you know. Um, especially because he's the first SSR, you know, DPS. Because what, you go to, you know. They're both debuffers. So now we're getting an attacker, you know, who still has debuffer in spirit, I guess. But to be fair, so does Julius, right? Julius was supposed to be a debuffer. I don't know if I could find it. Um, but at first he was supposed to be a debuffer, which is kind of crazy, but let me, let me try and see, um, hold on, let, let me try and see if I could find it, um, but at first, yeah, look, he was supposed to be a green debuffer, updated Julius debuffer green, 
and i mean it was pretty similar right you had the time stop the increased speed the reduced mobility that was the same um but this this was not and the alt was pretty similar like you had the guaranteed stun um you had this but this is just without this part it's just a guaranteed reduced mobility and no extra turn so there was some different stuff right before they also had these types of passives or like they were planning to do these types of passives but they didn't um but yeah this was a broken kit but just saying julius was supposed to be a green debuffer but now he's not obviously um but this you know could be very good he can't really be targeted at the beginning and then after the beginning well he's basically invincible forever i think that's how it's going to play probably it's gonna be pretty good it will so let me know what you guys think just wanted a kind of like a fun video talking about it you know seems to be very hyped to me um i'm very excited very very excited i hope he's really good i hope he makes mono blue good because mono blue has been getting so many new units but all the new units have like not been making mono blue good so i just i hope that it gets better